Hi guys, welcome to Code Decode. Today in this video, we are going to cover some very important and frequently asked exception handling interview questions. What is exception propagation? What is chained exceptions? What is throwing, rethrowing, and all such kind of concepts? So it's very easy for me to demonstrate this particular logic with a simple one class, one method M1 calling M2 and M2 calling M3, and the exception is propagating from the opposite direction, that is from M3 to M2, M2 to M1, and back to the caller. But this is not how the real life is in IT world. Your backend is not that simple. Your backend has to communicate initially with the front end to get the request from the front end or the user and then access data from the database layer and give it to the user. So in the real world, your backend is divided into controller, which is going to handle all your requests coming from a user to get the data from database. Your service layer, where you have all your business logics, then your data access layer, which is an interface between your objects and the data. This is a relational database and the object oriented language. And then you get the data from database back to dev layer, then back to service, check whether the data is in right format that the user wants, modify the data according with to the data transfer objects, convert your entity to data transfer objects in which format the data is to be shown to the user, then back to the controller which returns that particular data transfer object to the user. Now what happens in case any exception occurs at the database layer? Then if you have not put any try catch or the very worst form of ugliest form of exception handling, you have not done any kind of exception handling then your exception will directly be shown to your user and user will not be able to understand what actually broke at, at his end does he send any wrong id to fetch from the database or your business logic broke because of which you are facing an issue with the front end so for that reason exception handling is very important and hence exception propagation is also very important so if you don't handle the exception at any of these layer your exception will directly propagate from caller to caller that is your exception directly propagate from database to directly user interface if no exception handle occurs. So let's quickly see exception propagation first and then let's see how to handle it. Now this is a code decode CRUD which we have used this particular application in many videos where we have created a spring CRUD where we have done exception handling, global exception handling, custom exception handling. In many type of videos we have used this particular project. I'm going to just use it for the illustration purpose. I'm going to use exception handling demos okay so our application is ready i'm going to make you go through the structure and i'm going to remove everything and we're going to write this code from scratch to see what is exception propagation so this is our controller which is going to handle all your request coming from the front end now here we don't i don't have any angular or react application for you so i'm going to use postman as my front end next is exceptions so these are the three kind of custom exceptions that we have created. In few minutes, we are going to see how to create custom exceptions also. Then you have an entity, which is an employee class. The table is EMP. Then we have a repository, fetch the data from database, and we have a service layer. So I'm going to remove everything that we have in service layer also. I'm going to write it from scratch to understand what the exception propagation is all about. This is an interface and this is an implementation. I'm going to create a single REST endpoint, which is going to take a request from front end, giving you an employee ID. You have to fetch all the data from database for that particular employee ID. For that, I just am going to send you one single thing that is an employee ID. So get is fine. The path will be get an employee if I give you employee ID. So employee ID will be a path variable. And I'm going to create a method which is going to return a response entity of type currently a wildcard because I'll return either you an employee or if exception happens, then any custom exception that is controller exception is what I'm going to return back to you. So that is why anything can be returned as a response entity to the user. Fetch employee details what you are getting is a path variable so you have to take this path variable of name employee id in some local variable what will be the data type of this local variable the data type we will get from employee so the data type for this id to fetch from database is long so here also you have to take it in long so i have a long id here now here i'm going to create a method in service interface and implementation in service IMPL. So I'm going to create a method named as find by ID and I'm going to return this and this is going to be a employee type. So I'm going to create a method and change its type to employee. This method is created in service. Now service IMPL will cry and break says please add unimplemented method. So we're going to create an unimplemented method here and here we are going to use our CRUD repository to find by ID. So this find by ID is an existing method from 
Spring Boot. If you go to find here, if you go here, this is an existing method from Spring Data Repository. We are not going to create it our own. We are not going to create any custom query for this. And we are going to return this because the return type of this is optional and get is going to return you an employee type of object. You are going to return this employee object to controller. It says the return type is response entity. So you have to return it in response entity. So we are going to create a new response entity of type employee, which we are going to return. The response entity takes two arguments that is body and HTTP status. So we're going to give the body as the employee which we are getting and secondly the HTTP status. So here since we are able to fetch, we are going the happy path, we are able to fetch the data from database and you are returning it, you should always uh, return the response HTTP status as HTTP OK. We have this uh, from HTTP status enum from ORG Spring Framework HTTP. We are going to use this enum with OK. So let's hit this particular employee ID. But which employee ID should be hit so that we don't get an exception because we are going to run a happy path here. So for that, let's go to main resources in the application, see which database we are using. So we are going to use code decode as a database. So let's go to the dweaver and let's see there are five to six databases we have it here. The database that we are going to connect with uh, this particular application is code decode. So let's go into code decode. What is the table name? The table name should be the table name from employee entity. Table name is EMP. So in database again, the table will be EMP. So we have two employees, one code and two decode. So we're going to hit this with one and the happy path of a code should run. Exception handling demos, debug as Spring Boot application. Removing all the breakpoints by now, get one comma code as the response. So one comma code is the response and our code is running perfectly fine. So this is the happy part. Now what is exception propagation? So let's first create an exception for that. Now we know that employee is just, just two employee entries we have, that is one and two. If we try to hit it with three, we will get an exception. Enable the debugging for you and let's hit it. So our controller is capable enough to handle your employee ID. Employee ID comes as three. Here at line number 17, you're going to get an exception. So here we get an exception. So when exception occurs here, in the service, there is no try catch. So when exception occurs and there is no try catch, it is going to propagate it. So where is it going to propagate? Who called it? Controller. So it's going to find a try catch here. There is no try catch, ugliest form, no exception handling. Then this is going to throw the exception back to your front end. Front end is nothing but postman. So if I do F8 here, your exception comes here at front end because the exception is propagated from database down layer to service layer. No, no try catch here to the controller. No try catch here to the front end. A very ugly form of exception occurs. Internal server error. You don't understand which, which exception occurs here. Either it is a database exception or the service layer or a business logic exception. So this is exception propagation. No exception handling. The exception is propagated to the caller. And if caller doesn't handle, the parent caller and so on. If nobody handles to the JVM and JVM sends that exception to the front end as it is. So what is the solution to it? The solution is to handle the exception using try catch in the controller. Now catch, I'm going to handle all the kind of exceptions. You should show the user some user friendly exception. So we have a custom exception created here with an error code and error message. So we're going to use this custom exception and create new controller exception with an error message. Exception occurred while fetching data for employee with ID 3. And from where I'm going to get this ID 3? From the ID which I'm going to get in the controller. Now you're going to return a response entity and not of type employee because you didn't get the 3 as an employee. You are giving exception as a response. Return new response entity of type controller exception. Response entity takes two parameters that is the body. So body is nothing but controller exception and the HTTP status. So HTTP status enum from the spring framework we are going to use bad request because you have in the here given a bad request of employee 3 which does not exist in the database. So with this we have done exception handling. So now when you try to fetch the data with 3, the call goes from controller layer to service layer and from service layer to the repository level and when the repository sends you an exception. Repository is not capable enough to handle. There is no try catch in our repository. It's empty repository. Your service is not capable to handle it because there is no try catch but your controller is capable enough to handle it and throw some Stack trace because controller exception is a runtime exception, it is capable to show a stack trace with two messages that is error code and error message. So, error message will be descriptive for the user. So, let's now try to hit it. Your controller gets the request, it sends it to service, service layer to the repository, and it gives you exception. 
So exception, your try has given exception. So control goes to the catch and you have created a controller exception and send it as a response. So let's quickly see the response. You can see the track trace or else you can directly go down and see the error message which is a user friendly exception. So you can directly catch this error message in the front end and show this error message to the user that exception occurred while fetching data for the employee with ID 3. Please change your employee ID. It is much more readable than the previous one with the internal survey you were not able to understand anything. So this is exception propagation and if you are not able to do anything in a single project at in the 30 or 40 minutes of your interview, at least do this much that while handling the exception propagations from database layer, at least give a try catch at controller level, the least that you can do so that user is not shocked what kind of exception and why that has happened. So now let's quickly move ahead. What is chained exception in Java? So chained exception allows you to relate one exception with another exception. Currently with this particular exception thrown to a user, exception occurred while fetching three. Did you find any of the reason why what is the real cause of this exception? Whether the exception occurred because of your business logic that is either 3 is an admin and you are not allowed to view that data or 3 is not present in database at all. Are you able to understand? No, you are not able to understand. So with this error message, if you show this message also that it occurs at a business layer or at a database layer, it is better for users to relate one exception with another exception that is to relate fetching exception with either a business layer or a database layer one can describe an exception better. So for that, what Java people has given you is init the real cause or the underneath cause of that exception and get cause method to fetch that exception in the controller layer. So let's implement it and then understand what is the beauty of that init cause. Let's implement it. In the service layer first, let me first implement the business logic. So this is going to return you an employee object. Now there can be a case that if this employee dot get name. So right now I have just two employees, right? In the database for the employee, I have just two employees that is code and decode. I make this code as admin and I will not allow the users to view any of the data for this admin. So what I can do is I can put a business logic rather than implementing whole roles and authorities and authentication and authorization let me just once for single one employee that is code who is an admin so i'm going to throw a business exception so this is my business exception and i have a single parameterized constructor that i'm going to use so i'm going to create a business exception with a message exception occurred and occurred because of your business logic data is fine at database layer since you have created a business exception now you have to throw this exception explicitly to the controller so throw business exception and below it return your employee object also there can be a case that find by id dot get gives you an exception so what you can do is you can use try catch here i don't want to handle all other kinds of exception i just want to handle one kind of exception that is no such element exception this no such element exception occurs when you try to get an id with three but that doesn't exist in database so this get will give you no such element exception so in this case i want to throw a double layer exception this is the double layer exception with a single parameter here and give a message here data does not exist in database it's database layer issue isn't your life very easy if you are able to segregate whether the exception is because of your business layer or your database layer so you just have to go and add the data to the database or modify your data to be fetched from databases from business logic files and you have to throw this exception now here there is one more important thing to note with the case of chained exception you can use init cause so here the business logic says, okay, your exception is because of your business layer and not the database layer. But isn't that something very much related to permission denied to access data at database access layer? So we have one more option to give much more clarity to user. What is the real reason behind this business logic exception? So the real reason behind this can be initialized with init cause. And the init cause, we can give the permission denied this permission denied data access exception this is the real reason that a data access layer this user code is an admin and hence you are permission denied to access any of its data this is an existing a spring framework dow layer exception if you try to see the parent go inside the nested exceptions and you can see the parent is nothing but throwable. Init cause internally takes a throwable class. So you can throw this permission denied exception. The permission denied exception occurs and your message will be this is admin. You can't access data of admin is your real cause behind your business logic. So with business exception, you can show that it is a either it's a business exception or it is a double layer exception. But what is the internal cause of this business exception is you are permission denied at data access layer. 
this particular data and database in the data access layer is permission denied for you. Now controller exception says error fetching the data but also show the real calls. So it will be e dot get message with a space. So with e dot get message you will get at what layer the exception has occurred. So this e dot get message will get its message from here. With a new DAO layer or business layer you have passed your error message so you can get it from there. Not only just that, you can also use one more method that is given with a chain cause that is get cause. This method returns the actual underneath exception if there is any. You can add this e dot get cause. With this e dot get cause you will not only get the message that is it, it is a dove layer exception or a business exception but also with this get cause if there is an underneath cause like in the business exception the underneath cause is data access denied exception and also you can get the init cause. So now let's quickly try it with passing one so that your code flow goes here and let's see if you can see exception occurred because of your business logic and this is admin you cannot access the data. Let's quickly run it with one your controller handles it your service layer creates the business exception creates the init cause that is the permission denied and throw it if you can go down for the error message it says exception occurred while fetching employee with id 1 exception occurred because of your business logic data is finite database layer great it now we understood that it is a business layer now the real reason behind it is permission denied exception this is admin you cannot access data of admin so this is how you can show this particular error message to front end and your front end will at once understand that this one is nothing but admin and you cannot access it. So this is a very clear message that you give to the users. Now if you try it with three, you will get null because there is no internal cause of it. So with three, exception occurred while fetching with ID three, data doesn't exist in database layer. It is a database layer issue. So it directly says it is a database layer issue and there is no internal cause so you get null as the internal cause of it. So that is how you can do exception handling and also show users whether you have the business exception and what is the internal cause of that business exception or you have the direct dove layer exception without any init cause or get cause to fetch that exception in any of the layers. So that was all about chained exception and exception propagation. I have many more things to cover like how what is the use of throws keyword. Why, why do we recommend to use operations in the finally block, how to create customized exception, what is a stack overflow exception, how to prevent it, how can you override a super class method if it is throwing an unchecked exception or with a checked exception in a subclass. I have many many more things to cover with the exception handling. If you want me to cover more such questions on the exception handling, you have to let me know in the comment section then I will create more such videos for you. Thank you.